Let's now talk to Nigel Farage. He's MEP and leader of the UK Independence Party, joining me live from Brussels. Oh, I've just seen that uh, they've decided that the Greek second bailout should be delayed another week. Um, more indecision from Brussels, or is that common sense prevailing? Well, it's sort of cliffhanger stuff, isn't it? And uh, they do just about enough in time to stop the Greeks from failing to make their repayments. And this is a deliberate policy uh, to make sure the Greeks comply and make sure the Greeks behave themselves. It is, and I, I'm afraid, within the Greek parliament and within the Greek government, uh, no one's got the courage to stand up and say, we refuse to be treated like this. A little earlier, uh, I was speaking to your colleague, Marta Andreessen, um, and she hinted that the, the EU is effectively controlled by Berlin, but surely as the most responsible economy in Europe, doesn't Germany have that right to lead during an economic crisis? Well, that depends. I mean, if we were dealing with European economies that were very similar in structure and size, um, it may well be that a bit of, you know, from a purely economic point of view, that a dose of uh, German rules would be a very good thing. But the idea that you take an economy like Greece with 50% unemployment amongst its young people, with an economy that is likely to contract this year by a further 7%, and that what you do is you impose austerity without any stimulus whatsoever, frankly, is madness. What works for Germany doesn't work for Greece in economic terms. And in political terms, you know, just put yourself in the position of Greek people. Uh, the situation is desperate and getting worse by the day. And they see their own elected prime minister removed, replaced by a puppet who is doing the bidding of Brussels. And, and people are saying, well, if we can't vote to change our lives, we will have to take to the streets to try and change our lives. And I think perhaps, you know, serious though the economics are, I suspect that it's the social side of this that may in the end bring the euro down. And you're referring not obviously just to what's happening in Athens, but of course Europe wide at the moment. Are you talking about in effect a revolution taking place? I think that revolution is a very strong word. Uh, but I think in Greece that is not impossible. I mean, just remember, three weeks ago there were 80,000 people storming the barricades of the Greek Parliament trying to get in, and we saw 5,000 armed police keeping them out. Uh, we're seeing evidence of this in Spain, in Portugal. I mean, come on, we saw an Arab Spring last year. There's no, absolutely no reason why similar things cannot happen in Southern Europe. It is difficult enough to stomach tough austerity measures, tough government, if it's your own elected government, but to be dictated to by Angela Merkel, Herman Van Rompuy and Mr Barroso is for millions of people just totally unacceptable. You say growth is needed and clearly austerity measures yeah. don't enhance growth, but how do you stimulate a broken economy? What is the option? Ah, I'll tell you what the option is. For Greece, to begin with, you leave the euro, you go back to the drachma, you devalue by about 60%. Within a fortnight, your holiday bookings will have doubled um, and you'll start to get some growth coming back into the economy. No one doubts that tough decisions need to be taken in Greece. You know, that's obvious. But you've got to have some stimulus as well. And the only way that will happen is by leaving the euro. And can you create that drachma literally out of thin air? Or uh, from what I understand, there are no exit procedures for any country to leave the eurozone. Aren't there major barriers to that? Well, you're right. I mean, the people that constructed the European treaties from the very beginning were very devious, bad people who set out to create the United States of Europe without ever telling the peoples of Europe that was their plan. And that is why there is no clear exit strategy. However, when political will decides that it's time to leave the euro, there will be nothing that stops it. Now, look, of course, economic brains are going to have to get together. A new currency is going to have to be constructed. But it's happened before. It's happened many times. After all, we saw in Czechoslovakia, we saw that country split. We saw the currencies split uh, without any great difficulty at all. I am not pretending that in the case of Greece or Portugal that this can happen painlessly. It won't be an easy thing to do, but it's a damn sight better to take a tough decision and to give yourself a chance than to die the slow economic and social death that is currently going on. Mr Farage, I'll let you get back to that summit. Thanks so much for your time. Nigel Thank Farage you. there, member of the European Parliament, leader of the UK Independence Party, talking to me live there in Brussels. Always good to hear from you. Thank you.